from Barangaroo Studios, the AusBiz COV is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. All right, of course, it is time to, for the COB, in fact, um, let's, of course, have a look at where the market is tracking up by around two tenths of 1% there on the CBO 200, the ASX 200, up by around a third of 1%, 22 points, 8,097 as we um, kickstart the end of the trading day, I should say. I'm not sure why I just said kickstart. We're about to kickstart the weekend, though, aren't we? Um, let's have a look as well in terms of what we've been seeing just overall in themes today on the market. Of course, we couldn't quite make it there in terms of what we saw with the overall um, momentum in the hopes to get towards a record. But we did see some really good moves coming through in gold players today. Um, gold, of course, is looking like it is at this record, uh, 25,800 an ounce at the moment. Um, And of course, we've been looking as well at the potential here of um, what we're seeing. Sorry, we're having a few technical issues and my brain has frozen because of the technical issues. I should know better. I should be more professional. I'm going to get back into it now. The gold rush, of course, we saw gold moving towards these record highs, pushing a lot of the gold players higher. Um, China's crusade we've got there as well. And that's after we heard from President Xi talking about the fact that they still have this ambition, ambitious, excuse me, 5% growth target and this of course coming ahead of the key China data dump coming through tomorrow. The cut countdown of course we're on the way to expect these cuts coming through from the Fed next week. Pretty much after that PPI read yesterday it was likely that an emergency 50 basis point cut is not going to be on the cards. It's going to be more like a 25 basis point cut. All right let's have a look at some of the sectors that we saw today as we managed to just miss that record on the overall market. We mentioned the momentum coming through in gold that has pushed a lot of these gold players higher evolution mining up by about seven percent also the miners today as well bhp up by two percent there on the close fortescue looking good it's really interesting when it fell um, around 16 dollars earlier in the week quite a few guests i had said that looks like a buy it looks like people were listening iron ore futures also rebounding back above 93 dollars a ton as well in singapore so fortescue today having a good day up by 4.2 percent the banks having a look at those of course we saw quite a bit of weakness coming through yesterday in the banks um, a lot of brokers cutting their targets for CBA we had one today with a price target of $100 for CBA CBA down by 1% to $140 $141.54, but remember this is the week as well that UBS said, you know, they prefer the banks over the miners. A quick look at some of the corporate stories as well. There wasn't much around today. We were following the toll road group Atlas Arteria. The company starting a compensation claim against France due to the French Constitutional Council. Namoy Cotton tracking higher. This after Singapore's Olam increased its bid from 70 cents to 75. And then of course, it's just really been all about these uh, gold players because because as we mentioned quite a few times now, gold hit a record high. Let's get his take. Save me, Jimmy, from myself. Jimmy Jang from Macro Capital, your view on what has been another volatile week. Afternoon, Juliet. Um, yeah, very volatile. We got obviously, you know, we're just kind of a few days away from that FOMC meeting and the possibility of the rate cut is obviously creating a lot of buzz in both Australia and also in the US market as well. Um, look, the anticipation for a rate cut, as you mentioned, is in really intensified. So particularly kind of after the market suggested that the decision next week is still very still close call. Uh, one of the uh, point that we've seen was a former New York Fed president, Bill Dudley, recently said that there's a strong case for a 50 basis point of reduction, um, which kind of kind of moved that market expectation. So currently the chances for that 50 basis point rate cut is increased for 43 percent off from that 28 percent early in the day. And you know, our market is kind of reacting to this speculation pretty inter interestingly. So the US dollar obviously seen under a lot, a lot of pressure, you know, dropping against the yen and the euro. And then the two year treasury yields fell below 3.6 percent as well. And as you mentioned, Julia, the gold kind of surged to all time high level 
all kind of indicating that a lot of investors are moving into the safer assets. And the stock markets in the in the global market also kind of had a mixed uh, feeling. So Hong Kong, Hang Seng and the, the ASX today kind of rallied back off that kind of news, while the Japanese Nikkei and the South Korean stock had kind of dipped, largely due to that stronger yen pressures and upcoming holidays in the kind of region. So the mixed sentiment is kind of mostly driven by the potential easing by the Fed next week and also the, the recent ECB rate cut that we've seen as well. So the conversation is kind of really evolving around, uh, um, Julie, as you mentioned, between 25 bits or 50 bit rate cut right now. Uh, we're kind of more leading towards a 50 base point cut next week just because you know, the inflation has kind of moderated somewhat, but the Fed is kind of really looking at a broader economic scales or signals, uh, including the labor market as well. So while there's a clear pr pressure to align with that global easing trend, but the Fed's really walking on a fine line to avoid that overly aggressive stance that could really stoke the inflation again. So right now, it's all about balancing the inflation control with economic growth. So we're just getting really defensive with the both US and Australian market at the moment. Wow. So you're on wow. the 50 basis point cut side. That's um, quite interesting. How about, though, the overall outlook here for our economy, given, as we know, we're lagging behind in terms of the rate hiking cycle, but it does seem higher for longer. We're going to get some key jobs data next week as well. Yeah, so um, the 50 basis point cut, even when it comes to 20, 25 bits, um, that's going to have a really inverse reaction between the Australian share market and the US. So internally, what we're trying to actually focus on is not really kind of worrying too much of what the RBA will do, just because it, you know, the governor made it pretty clear that there won't be any rate cuts anytime soon, at least for this year remainder. Um, and as you said, the job data that's key points is coming out next week and um, something that we'll be closely monitoring. But overall, we're just kind of making sure that we're becoming a lot more long-term focus because in the short term we're going to see that volatility kick in in this Aussie market a lot of people is going to be very technically driven um, especially with the, the charts most importantly with those key events happening in the US like the election um, that was a close debate between both parties so you know, if let's say when Wall Street has been pricing in a lot of their position over in the US more towards Republican until Harris joined the, the race as well so it, it's very difficult um, to kind of know what's going to happen in this Aussie market just because because it's so driven by various factors right now. So what we want to do is rather than over like increasing our allocation in any of the stocks that we have in the portfolio, it's more so we kind of want to sit on the sideline a little bit until we find a little bit more certainty and then kind of redeploy back into the market once we find that certainty. So you're basically sitting on your hands at the moment? That's right. I wouldn't necessarily say sitting on the hand. It's more so to kind of monitoring our position to making sure that we're not exposed to any more specifically consumer discretionary sector. Because as you know, with the RBA potentially hiking the rate, um, you know, if, for example, we see the inflation just going off the roof and the RBA decides to come in and actually cut the rates, that's going to really driven a lot of volatility in the, let's say, consumer discretionary sector. And we also got to remember the main reason why the Fed's cutting the rate over in the US. It's a good news for the equities in somewhat, but that's also kind of indicating that the US economy is really slowing down. So it's really difficult to say how that's going to flow down to Australian share market. Um, so we just want to be really careful with how we allocate. But at the same time, Jimmy, you're increasing exposure in the fixed income space. Tell us why, where, what's behind this? Yeah, so it's kind of coming back to what I was saying is that the volatility is something that we're not a fan of with equities at the moment. But, you know, fixed income wise, you know, let's say when the private credit exposure, it's literally written on your loan deed as a lender that you're going to get that certain return with obviously the risk that we need to assume. Um, I've been kind of talking a little bit more about the private credit, but we recently made a decision to kind of allocate a further into that fixed income in the listed market, which is an IPO that Metric is going at the moment. So Metric is going through the real estate multi strategy fund that's going to be closing on the 25th and we're making some allocation there right now and one of the thing, key points that we saw in the investor presentation that we particularly liked was that it gives an exposure to the investors access to that diversified portfolio of the commercial real estate investment and that's both debt and equity and what makes it unique for the metric new fund is that it aims for a target return between 10 to 12 percent per annum that is net of fees and with the key focus on capital preservation which is something that we really love here at Macro. So half of that portfolio is in the commercial real estate debt through their, one of their funds called MCP Real Estate Debt Fund, which has a, a pretty impressive yield of 11%, while the other half is through the commercial real estate equity 
via the Matrix Real Estate Equity Opportunities Fund, which has a target internal rate of return of over 20%. So the kind of asset that's in this particular fund that's about to IPO is very well diversified, which is something we love, kind of reverse our risk profile. And they invest in a range of sectors, including industrial, residential, retail, office, and even in specialist assets like hotels. But this diversification kind of spreads the risk across multiple areas while kind of still allowing for the potential upside from the real estate equity investment and from the debt side as i mentioned it really kind of focuses on the senior secured loans which offer the consistent cash flow while the equity investment provide the potential for the significant capital appreciation so we really love the the way the metrics was going forward with the new commercial real estate fund that they're opening and because we were always looking out for some allocation in the commercial real estate sector so it kind of aligned with our expectations so we started to allocate as of yesterday all right, Jimmy, have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining us. Jimmy Jang there from Macro. Um, pretty much the main story of the day was Metcash. Um, I'm just going to bring that to you, what actually happened. We had um, an AGM from Metcash. They said higher rates, cost of living pressures led them to cut or led us as consumers to cut back on spending. Um, they warned of challenging trading conditions, but did say that value seeking customers drove sales at their IGA and Foodland brands. There was a downturn, they said, though, in the hardware division and also at the AGM Metcash saying that they'll continue to bed down on recent acquisitions and focus on cost and cash initiatives. Shares though did track higher by 1% and that was our stock of the day. We had Jonathan Takadina from MPC Markets and Luke Winchester from Merriweather Capital join Nadine. The main thing that I see is that you know, Metcash is a range bound stock. Okay, and uh, yeah, the, the results have come out. Hey, there's nothing great about it. Uh, sorry, there's nothing terrible about it, but there's nothing that the market said, oh, fantastic, let's, let's buy it up. Uh, and if you look at it, it's just been range bound all this time. The market's preferred uh, the two leaders in the space, obviously the, the good old duopoly of Coles and Woolworths, and you know, the, that's where the leaders are uh, in this space. So the market's uh, rewarded them uh, you know, for you know, no real logical reason. Uh, so unfortunately, that's a, you know, I think it remains range bound. Uh, and so that's a hold for me on Metcash. That, that real defensive style business, food, hardware, liquor, you know, three things that uh, you'll, you'll always expect probably um, revenue growth in the low single digits, hopefully eke out a bit of margin growth on top of that and, um, you know, report a good, a good dividend as well. So um, Metcash is certainly giving you that aspect. If you're an investor who, who is, is, is ultra defensive, you want, you want stability in your portfolio and that nice dividend, it's doing the jobs. All right, let's have a look at the after close. Leaders, we are done for the week. Let's have a look. Capricorn Metals up almost 11%. We touched on West African resources and some of these gold players with gold at records. Perseus Mining, Chalice Mining and Red 5 also looking good. Um, to the laggards today, um, having a look at those, it was really just a switch out of some of these lithium players because, of course, they rallied quite hard um, on some short selling or scramblers, I should say, covering their short selling positions earlier in the week. Uh, Pallet and Energy also coming under pressure, so a bit of an ease out of some of those uranium players too. In the small end of town, MedAdvisor had a good day, up 18%. Chalice Mining we touched on as well. To the downside today, um, Brockman Mining, Kinetico Energy, I think we spoke to them during um, reporting season, and Red Hill Minerals down by 7%. All right, what is happening this weekend? Well, it's all about the China data dump coming through tomorrow. We've got retail sales, production and investment. I think tonight there's a little bit of data in the US as well, export and import prices due and the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index as well. But of course, that China data, very key. Looking ahead next week, we've got um, a speech by the RBA Assistant Governor Brad Jones on Monday, the Thursday jobs data. I think at one point this week, maybe twice, I said that this was coming out this week. I was a week ahead of myself. So never wrong for long, as they say. And uh, population growth for the March quarter as well. Globally, a big one. We've got the Fed rate decision. Now, interesting, Jimmy, they're talking about they're expecting potentially a 50 basis point cut. Um, Nadine spoke to Jeffrey Treganza earlier this week from Vantage Markets, who doesn't expect any cut at all. So it's always interesting that people in the markets have very different views. And of course, that's what makes 
this game, if you can call it a game, it's not a game really, but this um, industry fun. Japan, Bank of Japan policy rate decision. China, one year, five year loan prime rates. I think they've got the one year MLF as well. And the Bank of England policy rate decision. Let's see where we've ended the day's trade. Certainly not the gains that we saw on the open, but um, hopefully we are tracking high. You never really know on a Friday whether the sellers are going to move in. No, we actually look like we had quite a good gain on the close. So 24 points on the ASX 200, a third of 1% to 8,099.9 points. So just under 8,100 points. So that is a new 20 day high. We talked about Capricorn metals, West African resources looking good. And um, overall, it was that gain coming through in energy and material players, which we knew was going to happen when we woke up, of course, and saw all those big moves in the commodities markets. All right. Have a fabulous and safe weekend. We'll be back from 9.45 a.m. Eastern on Monday. See you then.